So today I'm going to talk about uh, yet another PCIe Gen 4 SSD, the Western Digital Black SN850, which according to Western Digital is supposed to be one of the fastest SSDs on the market. Now I have a 500 gigabyte and a 1 terabyte version here that will cost you around 135 and 230 dollars respectively, but there's also a 2 terabyte version available for which you will have to set aside 430 dollars. So yeah, it is on the expensive side of Gen 4 drives. So today I'm going to compare it all to the other drives I managed to collect so far and see if these are actually worth their premium price. And I'm also not going to spoil the conclusion right away, but if you were planning to buy this drive, keep on watching because some of the results will be pretty interesting. Let's begin. This video is brought to you by Gigabyte and their brand new Aorus FI27QX gaming monitor. This monitor features a 240Hz refresh rate, both G-Sync support and FreeSync premium support, so it's great for gamers, and on top of that it has great image quality and almost perfect color reproduction thanks to its excellent Quad HD IPS panel. If you're looking for an ultimate all-arounder, check this monitor out using the links in the description below. Now before we dive into the results, let's take a look at how this drive is put together. Now, unfortunately, Western Digital isn't sharing a lot of information about their own design, but we can see that it uses their own controller, a bit of DRAM cache, and their own 3-bit TLC flash memory. It also applies the usual SLC caching for increased performance, as long as you have a bit of free space available on your drive. It also offers the usual five-year-long warranty period, but they don't seem to think that, you know, hardware encryption is something that is very important. So if you want that, you will have to look somewhere else. Now, I really do like that the Western Digital puts all the components on one side, leaving the back of the PCB completely empty, which means that everything will be covered by a heatsink. And speaking of heatsink, so Western Digital actually sells this drive with a heatsink as well, but you will have to pay a bit more for that one. And if you go for the one without a heatsink, like I have right here, you will have to use a heatsink on your motherboard because it gets way too hot without it, but I'll talk about that a bit later in this review. I also really like that they kept the PCB black and the sticker nice and simple. Now I know that you will never get to see it in your system, but for those builds where you do see a part of it, it is so much nicer to not have an ugly blue PCB shining through. To experience all this drive has to offer, you need to have a system with PCIe Gen 4 support, which is a desktop computer with an AMD CPU and an X570 or a B550 motherboard. And when it comes to Intel, it will be supported by the upcoming Rocket Lake CPUs paired with some Z590 and Z490 motherboards. Now you can use it in other systems as well, but then you won't get that full speed that this drive has to offer and you're probably just better off buying a cheaper SSD instead. But let's see how this drive performs. Now for my test trig, as usual, I used an Asus ROG Crosshair 8 Hero motherboard with an AMD Ryzen 9 5950X CPU, an NZXT Kraken all-in-one cooler, 32GB of 3600MHz Corsair Dominator Platinum memory, an RTX 3080 GPU and an 850W Seasonic Prime Titanium power supply. The first tests were done on an open test bench without a heatsink and without any extra active cooling on them because I really do like to test the products as they come and then see what difference does it make with some added cooling. Now let's start with some sequential read and write speeds. I don't really think that these are so important unless all you do is copy files to and from really fast storage but those are the big fancy high numbers that most manufacturers really love and use for their marketing, so we might as well get them out of the way right away. Uh, when it comes to read speeds, the SN850 is actually the fastest drive in the chart, together with the Corsair MP600 Pro. It is slightly faster than the Samsung 980 Pro and significantly faster than all other Gen 4 drives in the graph. I did leave a couple of Gen 3 and SATA drives in the list as well, as reference, but obviously those cannot really compete in pure transfer speeds. In sequential writes, the 1TB SN850 takes a good third place, ahead of the 980 Pro, and it is only behind the MP600 Pro and the Aorus 4 SSD RAID setup. 
The smaller SN850 is a little bit behind, but still competitive with most larger Gen 4 drives on the market. So both of these are doing very well. But as I said before, sequential speeds don't really represent the actual performance in real-world scenarios. And in my opinion, the PCMark 10 benchmark that has a bunch of different tests that are meant to replicate actual use cases is just a more reliable and a much more meaningful way to look at an SSD. So I'm going to start with a PCMark 10 quick test, which is a very light test because uh, most of what we do with our systems is actually not that heavy on your SSD and it is mostly handled by the cache of the drive, not the main capacity, and that is exactly what this benchmark puts to test. Now both SN50s do really well here and they're pulling ahead of the competition by a very nice margin. But as you can see, there are some Gen 3 drives near the top as well, which kind of shows that you won't actually notice the difference between a good Gen 4 drive and a good Gen 3 drive in these light tasks. And if we look at a full PC Mark 10 suite, which is a much more intense test that is uh, meant to replicate a more serious active use of a drive, so an OS drive for your system, for example, or as a scratch drive for your video editing rig, and in my opinion, this is one of the most important benchmarks for a high-end drive. Now here, both SSDs perform extremely well, uh, leaving a nice gap between them and the competition. And again, it is very interesting to see that some of the better Gen 3 drives are very competitive as well. And that is actually a pretty accurate representation of what would you expect in a real world scenario. Now, just because it says Gen 4 on some SSDs, it doesn't always make them better. So Western Digital did make a really fast drive. However, while it was being very fast, it was also getting really, really hot. Now do keep in mind, most high-end controllers do get hot. So for example, the 980 Pro got to around 90 degrees in my testing, but this SN850 hit 100 degrees onto the controller within minutes of testing. And for me, you know, that's just not really comfortable to see. It was also causing this drive to throttle in extreme scenarios. So if we look at the PC Mark 10 consistency test, which is an extremely heavy test that usually takes a day or two to complete, the Western Digital actually dropped quite far from the top with the 980 Pro now being ahead by a big margin. But do remember, this wasn't an open test bench without any active cooling, which I would call is, you know, far from an ideal situation. But at the same time, it is their own design that allows this drive to get this crazy hot in a less than ideal situation, unlike other drives that slow down way before reaching these crazy temperatures, which, you know, it's still okay, but then I do think it's very important that they make it crystal clear on their website, on their manual, and even on the box itself, that this drive needs some form of cooling. I did another consistency test with a heatsink and some active cooling, and it definitely did help. It is now head-to-head -head with a 980 Pro, but do keep in mind that the 980 did not need a heatsink nor airflow to get to this result, so I do think it would pull ahead even more if it had some cooling. I will include a retest of all SSDs as well with active cooling for future videos, but with every consistency test taking a few days, it will take quite a while till I get that done. I also did a PC Mark 10 full and quick benchmarks with the cooling as well, but as you can see, that didn't make much of a difference uh, right now, so you won't really feel the effect of cooling your drive in everyday performance. But, you know, considering how hot it gets, you really do want to cool your drive so it lives longer. So overall, I really think Western Digital made an impressive drive. First Gen 4 SSDs that launched a year and a half ago would reach really high peak speeds, but they were not doing better than Gen 3 drives in more intense real-world tests. And this drive actually manages to pull ahead of its competitors in all real-world focused benchmarks. But I would say there are still a few things to take in consideration, and the first one is definitely the high temperature. So if you're buying this drive, you need to make sure that you use a heatsink and that the drive has at least some airflow. If you need hardware encryption, you'll have to find an alternative, as Western Digital did not include it. But I would say the biggest thing right now is the price. 
Uh, price per gigabyte of these drives is more than double than of a mid-range SSD. So for example, you can actually pick up a one terabyte SN550 for the price of a 500 gigabyte SN850 and still have some money left over. And since most of the basic things that people need from an SSD, like making sure your PC boots quickly or loading your games quickly, will not really feel much faster, taking a larger instead of a faster drive is just a better choice, in my opinion. Now, that being said, the benefits of an extremely fast SSD should improve with Microsoft's direct storage technology, uh, which should you know, drastically change the way that faster SSDs impact the whole gaming experience. But that is not out yet, and I wouldn't recommend spending so much money today on a promise of a new technology that might come somewhere later this year. But if you don't need encryption, and you're not looking for the best value, and you just want that pure, pure performance, it is really hard to argue with these benchmarks. So it is actually fair to say that the Western Digital Black SN850 is the fastest Gen 4 SSD on the market. Now that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please give me a like and subscribe to Tech Testers to never miss a video. Bye guys.